Hello and welcome to my future model build. As the Youngmeister project nears its end, already I'm becoming rather twitchy and thinking about what do I do next. Well, this is what the next might be. It's a vintage kit um, marketed by Ben Buckle Kits. It's from a 1946 design, the Falcon. It's a vintage model and it's something of a beast with a wingspan of some eight feet. So I'd like to give you a little bit of background on why I'm attracted to this sort of model um, and go by way of a little bit of an unboxing. So here we go. I've removed the packaging, uh, the padding that went around uh, the balsa parts. But before we start taking things out, a little bit about of background as to why I'm interested in this sort of model. I recognise that it isn't everybody's cup of tea. However, it's a little bit of nostalgia for myself. When I was about 10 or 11 years of age, my uncle gave me a, a pile of magazines from 1952, the Aero Modelling magazine, and they had free plans included in many of the issues. And I think I built just about every free flight model that was in there. And I had about an 80-90% success rate with them. Um, I'd never really got away with the control line model that I built, but I enjoyed the free flight. However, as I've got older, the chance of me running after a free flight model is pretty slim. But I'm still attracted to the designs. And building a model like this, I will fly it as a radio assist. And by that I mean, I won't fly it round like a... Um, an RC trainer perhaps I'll fly it round cut the engine back glide it around gracefully as it approaches terra firma the throttle will be opened up again and a wear shield climb and this is a model uh, that I've had my eye on for some time and when the kit became available I couldn't resist it so let's have a look at what's inside well first of all one's eyes drawn to these nice chunky wheels which gives you some impression of the dimensions that we're going to be dealing with. Some parts that actually have been partly cleaned up and partly machined far more than they were in the Junkmeister, which was simply just big blocks of balsa with no attempt at shaping them. I suspect these are the cheeks. Some nicely packaged parts. For the tail surface, these are all the tail surface parts. And then just look at these ribs. Look at the size of them. It clearly gives an idea of the overall size that this model's going to be. These are just beasts. It's a fairly simple design. Uh, not quite flat bottomed. There's a slight under camber. But big lumps of ribs. Pre-formed formers in quite substantial plywood, which is actually of a very good quality. I can see that just by looking at the packaging. And some of the formers that give a nice shape. It's a, it's a fully ribbed um, fuselage which will give a nice streamlined look, some of the upper and lower formers that form the nice shape around the box structure. More parts. Small pack of pieces. It is actually only a three channel model. A nice bundle of longitudinal parts and it looks like very good quality balsa actually you can just tell by how close the grain is there's a telltale hint no preformed fuselage uh, undercarriage here that all needs to be bent up to shape some hardwood blocks preformed parts and then sheets and sheets of balsa. 
Now let's have a look at the plans. Beginning with this set of plans, you can see this is actually the tail surface and it's one inch short of three foot span. It's quite colossal. And there is provision in the original design for this to be removable. Uh, the suggested method for attaching the tail to the fuselage is through rubber bands, which I must admit I'm not too keen on. But the idea of it being removable is attractive because otherwise this would be an extremely bulky model to both transport but also to store. The wings, which we'll see in a moment, have a design where there is a wooden former which slides into a box in the opposite wing. And that's the method used to attach the two wing panels, which is just as well because the overall wingspan of this model is some eight feet. And as you can see here, the ribs themselves are quite colossal, made out of eight ply in some cases and eight balsa in others. Um, here you can see the provision for a box that takes the tongue of the other panel to slide into. And the fin, once again, is enormous. This is simply a three-channel model, so that fin needs to be effective to move around the plane. Well, these are the wings, and as you can see, they have a rather interesting design feature. And apart from the conventional main spar and ribs, the next thing that jumps out are these diagonal braces which run through the wing. There's an upper set and a lower set and they're going to add enormously to the rigidity of the wing itself. Obviously important on a wing of this size. You can see here a little bit more detail regarding the ply tongue that slots into the opposite box that's been created in the other wing panel and there is a 3d drawing of the form that the ribs and spars take it's also sheeted indicated by the dotted line so this i imagine is going to be a very rigid wing and because it's in two panels Although the overall dimensions will be very impressive 8 feet, that's not a major problem in terms of storage. So to the final set of plans. And so we come to the final set of plans and often the most interesting. And these are the plans for the fuselage. And in keeping with the rest of the model, it's a bit of a beast. Interestingly, the plans show a 10cc spark ignition engine. And as much as uh, I'm attracted to that, I don't honestly know how practical it would be because an engine, a spark ignition engine of that size is going to be rather noisy. And unless I'm going to run it for a minute and then cut the engine and glide it down, flying around, chugging around with a spark ignition engine blasting away, I don't think would be very popular with our neighbours at the flying field. So the alternatives are twofold. There's the sacrilege of putting an electric motor in, but the advantage that in terms of flying, I could climb it up, cut the engine, glide it down, restart the engine, take it up again, and fly it actually in a very um, radio assist manner. More attractive would be a four-stroke engine, ideally an open rocker, which would look beautiful in a model such as this. But that's somewhere down the line. I haven't got the engine for it. Um, the fuselage would probably be the last thing that I would start, and I would almost certainly start on building the tail surfaces and the tail feathers first, just as something to crack on with. But it's an interesting build, it's a stick stick balsa build, although the sticks involved are rather large. And I think this will be a very impressive model. It's actually 
dimensionally, I think, a little bit shorter than the Junkmeister that I've been building. It's just the wings are so big. But it would be an interesting model to build. Look great with those chunky wheels going across the field. Um, this is going to be the next build, I think. So until the next update, get flying if you can. If you can't, let's get creative and do some model making. Bye for now.